This is Amanda Grace. If you're unfamiliar, she claims to be a prophet of God. Uh, she's a kind of a televangelist type of person. She works with like Kenneth Copeland a lot and stuff, prosperity gospel, you know the type. And she works with Mike Lindell a lot as well. As a matter of fact, she had a conversation with Mike Lindell recently. You know, Mike Pillow, the Mike, the My Pillow guy Lindell. Anyway, I wanted to listen to the, how their conversation went because I understand it got absolutely wacky. So let's check this out, see what they had to say for each other. And while we do, we're going to play some Final Fantasy VII remake. So I'm just kind of wandering around doing whatever in the background. Shouldn't bother you too much. All right, cool. Let's do it. We're all people. We all want joyful lives while we're here. We want things. We don't want our country taken and our lives destroyed. And that's where everywhere I go, it's the same. It doesn't matter. I could be in the middle of a mega rally or I could be in the middle of Minneapolis, right in the middle of the hood where I used to go down and do crack cocaine years ago. And I'd sit there and the people are the same everywhere now. They're looking for hope. They don't want borders open and fentanyl pouring into our country yeah. and destroying us. They don't want this. They don't want all these things going on that's around them. But okay, the fentanyl thing—it's not coming over through open borders. That's not happening. Our borders are not open, as he seems to be absolutely convinced of. Our borders are no more open than they were under Donald Trump. However, to my knowledge, up to this point, South America has been dealing in fentanyl. Mexico, the Mexican cartels, have not been working with fentanyl. In fact, they're very opposed to it. But fentanyl is apparently, from my understanding, very easy to make. It's like heroin, basically, except it's even quicker and easier to make, surprisingly. I can't even believe it's easier to make. Maybe it takes less time because it's a chemical process and you don't have to wait for a plant. I'm not sure. I haven't looked into the synthesis process of fentanyl, though I should. My understanding is you just need a little lab the size of just a normal room, and you need the right chemicals. That's the hardest part about this whole process, getting the right chemicals. South Americans can get the chemicals a lot easier. The chemicals are heavily regulated in the United States, but they're super straightforward to get from Chinese suppliers in South America. And China worked with the U.S. to shut down, you know, the supply of the, these certain types of chemicals. They've just got, like, really long names. No point in even talking about what, the, what they are or whatever. But they shut down the sale and production of these chemicals and shipping to South America but they just went to other European countries to buy the precursors to produce the precursors to make fentanyl. You're just never going to stamp this out. You need to go to the demand side and find a way to stop that. You know, I, I explained to my kid why drugs are bad. I didn't say they're bad. I said they're very, very good. And once you do it, you cannot stop yourself any longer. It's over. There has to be some way to address the problem of people starting drugs in the first place, other than killing the supply, because that's obviously not working. What are they doing? It's coming to these buckets. So I look at it as a, this is God giving us grace, and we're in a great time to be alive. We get one shot at this, and this is historical, everybody. We get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow, because opportunity comes once in a lifetime, yo. You know, it's beautiful. I agree with that. And sometimes the very things the enemy uses to destroy, the Lord will use those very things to propel. Right. And Absolutely. Bring victory. Yes. And and greed and remember, evil is greedy, everybody. That's mm -hmm. our big advantage. If I was their marketer, I would say, <laughs> you guy, I'm gonna win on, on the on the inauguration day. I love that he's talking about greed being evil when he's literally talking to a televangelist who believes in prosperity gospel send me all your money send me all your money send it all give me every penny you have all of it everything that's like practically all i hear from this woman seriously it's insane uh in 21 i would have went in there if i was sir marcus said okay everybody they're still talking about the stolen election let's not do anything stupid and well until until they quit talking about it 
and we'll and we'll show them, we'll, we'll trick them and say socialism and communism is good. It's like having a cup of coffee with your neighbor. Well, what did they do? They didn't do that. They went right for the juggler, shut down the pipeline, fifty thousand jobs right. lost, union <laughs> jobs lost. Um, What's he talking about? Is he, is he talking about the Keystone XL pipeline that wasn't shut down? 13 people committed suicide. They opened up the border. They didn't just stop the wall. They opened it wide open. Okay. Bring in the illegals. And this didn't happen. None of this took place. They didn't open the border. They being Joe Biden, presumably. This is completely made up. He lives in a fantasy land of his own creation, and it is nuts to watch. Fentanyl, the Trojan horse coming into our country like you wouldn't believe and um, pouring into our country. And everything they have done has been to destroy our country. But what do they have? They have the media, everybody. So if there were anybody watching. Who is they? In the media out there, they're getting the propaganda that they, there's still people from brainwashed that this administration is doing a good job. It's sickening. These late night talk show hosts that, that um, oh. you know, are just brain, you know, I don't know what. It they're not doing bad, this administration. Could be worse. I'm not happy about what Biden is doing on Israel. Turns out he's talked about being a Zionist before. He identifies as a Zionist, so that's not great. In fact, it's disgusting, but yeah. But it is. They're either they're part of the evil or they've really deeply embedded in propaganda. But the but I will tell you who feels hopeless in this country. The people that feel hopeless are sitting there staring at Fox News day in and day out, and all they're getting is downer, downer, downer. Right. Yes, absolutely. He's hitting the nail on the head here. Because Fox will not talk about election, where we're at to secure our elections. They're not going to give you any hope. They're like a weather channel that can't tell you about tornadoes or hurricanes. Okay, the election stuff is complete nonsense, and I would say that's just as downer as anything else. Elections are secure. There is nothing to worry about with the elections. Trump set out to confuse and freak people out intentionally. Hurricanes, everybody. You need to get your information from all the new social media platforms. And we'll include Twitter in that because Elon took care of all this crap over there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, so now... Let Elon took care of Twitter? Yeah. If you mean destroyed it, then sure, I can agree with that one. Let me ask you quickly, just because you mentioned Fox... Why do you think they stopped talking about all of it? Why do you think Fox just acted I, like it doesn't exist? I, I, I 100% believe they're in on it. I believe the Murdochs were either okay. in on it. They had to be in on stealing the election. Um, they, remember, Smartmatic sued Fox News on February 4th of 2021. That started lawfare. They haven't done anything. You don't even hear about that lawsuit. This no, was this Dominion settlement. Dominion, everybody. When Dominion, when they said that dirty settlement with Dominion last spring, my lawsuits, you know, we're subpoenaing, subpoenaing Fox News and stuff for all these things to get information from them. You would think that they would want all the evidence I had. It was crickets, right? And also, remember, my evidence from Dennis Montgomery, Dennis Montgomery, they were on Sean Hannity to Earth in 2017 with Sarah Carter. And I forget the other person. And they had he said, this is the biggest discovery ever. More what is he even talking about? Biggest discovery ever? 2017? What? To come and they silenced, silenced Sean, silenced her. I forget what the other guys was. We've shown that before. Fox News went. They didn't want anything to do with either thing. But let me tell you the timing. Dude, I don't know what the hell he is talking about right now. Honestly, I'm so lost. And aside from that, Fox News didn't silence anybody. Those people are still perfectly free to say whatever they want. They're just not free to use Fox's platform. That's all. Me of this, everybody. Okay. Number one. This company is supposedly Dominion, what worth a hundred million? They get they sell for seven hundred and eighty-seven million on a Tuesday. On a Wednesday, they come out and they hammer me with this. Five, Mike Lindell loses five million dollars. His evidence is no good. That lawsuit doesn't even go to court till twenty twenty-four. Everybody, dude, I have no idea what he's talking. I am so lost. What are you going on about right now, Mike? Oh my God! They lied to all of you. 
That was on a Wednesday. What happened that Friday? They fired Tucker. They didn't fire him. They benched him, everybody. They're paying, what, $30 million a year to have your number one draw to your network sitting on a bench. Now, you've got to think about that. Is there a hidden agenda at Fox? Of course there is. Dude, again, I'm just so lost. What the hell is he talking about? He's like scattershot going from thing to thing to thing, and none of it is like internally consistent or cohesive of course there is there it has to be or you would not when you see deviations in behavior yes. if it doesn't make sense there's a hidden agenda everybody fox news remember they reported they called arizona early yeah that's, I remember weird. That. that's weird fox news it, it's been controlled opposition this is what i believe you have big, huge companies behind that. Remember, they were all behind the vaccine, everybody. They got all paid off. All Which companies? Does Is he talking about Fox News? All of them did. All the Fox hosts, you know, from Sean Hannity. Wow, he says that Fox News hosts, including Sean Hannity and Tucker, apparently, were paid off about the vaccine. To talk about it what i guess to make people try to get it or this is just bizarre and on down sean's so pro vaccine it's sickening sean i uh, on the summer of 21 i sat in sean hannity's house and said and he turned to my gal and said at two in the morning he goes you know they're don't you care about mike they're gonna kill him and that's what he said you know i don't you care about mike well, they could kill him and i go and she looked at me like, what? Don't you care about your country? I go, Sean, do you think I'm going to shut up? You know what I have. You know this election was stolen. And you also know that we need to fit. We got to get rid of these computers. And, and I said, you're going to be the problem, Sean, if you don't speak out. Dude, I'm so lost. But I think he's saying Sean Hannity called him and said, you're going to kill people by discouraging them from getting vaccinated. And he said, I guess we should be talking about election theft instead of the vaccine I, am i picking this up right if you're so worried about your money whatever and you got a thing in front of you that says you can't talk about you can't talk negative of the vaccine and you can't talk about the machines or computers or the elections at all they couldn't even have uh, two thousand meals on i told sean i said you guys will be the downfall you're the one that's going to destroy our country and you know he looks at me he goes mike you think it'd be better if we weren't here at all how would that be? I said, it would be 10 times better because when you try. Oh boy, talking smack to uh, Sean Hannity. Uh, somebody, a news co uh, outlet yeah. to put out the news. As I said, it's like a weather channel that you trust they're going to report hurricanes or tornadoes. And if, they, and if you're not reporting that, people die. You lose countries. That's what the biggest obstacle we were up against, everybody. Fox News, Newsmax, and Salem Media. It's funny, when Salem Media, they went silent on everything because they were just afraid of lawsuits because they went public in 17. They're afraid they're stockholders. We have a due daily, due, um, duty to our stockholders. Oh, they would. They used to have me on every day to talk about pillows. As soon as, soon as uh, this all went down and I'm raising my hand, Mike Lindell, and they're all on revenue shares too with my pillow. Oh, my, my pillow, help him out. He got canceled at the box stores. But then you won't have me on to talk about why I got canceled. Then the executives at Salem Media. Okay. They. Dude, this guy is just rambling on about nonsense right now. This is insane. Get help, Mike, for real. What the hell is happening right now? They you know, talk to me, they go, Mike, we just can't do this. You know, we'll report if it's really news out there. Like, how about Racine County in, in Wisconsin? When all the, the when they had the report of like, going into nursing homes and grabbing people that can't can't talk and would you like to vote for Biden? Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, you know, that's horrible. Um, you know, this was all over the uh, should have been all over the news, but RSBN's the only one that covered it. Okay. Say RSBN is insane. Um I I don't think it's run by this guy, but he's like one of the main quote unquote reporters, really just news commentators. It's uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene's girl, a uh, boyfriend. I'm sorry. Marjorie Taylor Greene's boyfriend is who it is. Uh, Brian something or other. I don't remember his name.
Salem did not cover it. When Gableman did a whole thing in Wisconsin and said, let's pull down the election, he, was, uh, they, he did an investigation ordered by the legislatures there. Okay. He did it. He said, decertify Wisconsin was his recommendation. Salem media didn't report that. Now, everybody, let's fast forward a year. Okay. Okay. Then they come in and they come out with Dinesh going, we got 2,000 meals. Oh, this is going to, you know, no machines in it, right? No machines. So if they say they can't talk about it because there's machines, you can't swear and say Dominion or Smartmatic or es &S or Heart. Okay. So Salem Media, after two weeks after that release, when I was down in Mar-a-Lago, okay, and I knew this was going to happen. I knew it. So they put it out there and everybody's talking about 2,000 meals, except for two places, everybody. Is he saying 2,000 meals, like meals on wheels, 2,000 meals? Newsmax and Fox. And Salem Media execs came to me and they go, Mike, can you believe it? They won't. Dude, is, is, do you think Amanda Grace is even paying attention anymore? Do you think she's even listening or is she like, I don't know, playing Brick Breaker on her uh, screen there? Is that what she's doing? She seems like a brick breaker type of person, right? Let us go on and talk about some 2,000 meals. And I went, really? How does it feel? How does it feel? When I'm sitting on every evidence known to man, I've had it up on my platform, Frank's speech, for almost three years now. And I get called, well, there's no evidence out there. Mike Lindell spews and there's no evidence. It's been posted for three years. Mm -hmm. We have cast full records there. Now they come right out of the machine. It doesn't matter what you have, everybody. If they're, if they're all in on all the media, they have all the media. I want to tell everybody something. So yeah. the back in, I, I look at this, it came to me a year okay. ago. He wants to tell everybody something now. Hasn't he been doing that for like 20 minutes? Just what, 35 minutes? Just rambling nonsensically? This is like a stream of consciousness that I, the likes of which I, I don't think I've seen in like a long time. The back in, I, I look at this, it came to me a year ago and, and I thought, you know what? We have tried everything. It reminded me of Al Capone. Al Capone was a gangster in Chicago, everybody in the twenties when prohibition was, uh, was going on. Yeah. They, they couldn't get him on, on murder. They couldn't get him on racketeering, gambling, bootlegging, nothing. Yeah. You know why? And they all had all the evidence in the world. Yeah, they couldn't get the guy. Once they felt like they couldn't get him on anything because he never got his hands dirty. He always had somebody else doing it for him. And how do you, like, if somebody commits a murder, how do you get somebody else for something that this guy did? It doesn't make any sense. So they had to create the RICO Act to take down criminal organizations, and that's what's being used against Donald Trump now. Rudy Giuliani actually used the RICO Act and maybe even created the RICO Act originally for, like, gangs and stuff in New York, mobsters in New York, uh, New York City. Yeah, eventually Al Capone, they got him on tax evasion because they knew he was bringing in a bunch of money, but they didn't know where it was coming from, and they saw him spending and everything. So, yeah, that's how they got him. But, yeah, don't mess with the IRS is the moral of the story here. Because here's why. He had the media in his pocket, the judges in his pocket. He had the early voting in his pocket so he could say which politician. So then the politicians were in And he had the police force in his pocket. So what did they do? They sat back and go, let's get him on tax evasion. And everyone's going, well, what's that going to do? Well, he ended up at Devil's Island. He ended up at Alcatraz. That's what it did. They... Al Capone was actually, I don't know that that's where he ended up, maybe. But Al Capone was, I think his brain was destroyed from syphilis. Is that right? I don't remember. Yep, yep. He had syphilis and it had just destroyed his brain. He died of cardiac arrest in 1947, but the decline began earlier. After his transfer to Alcatraz, his mental and physical condition deteriorated from paresis, a late stage of syphilis. He was released in 1939, was sent to a Baltimore mental hospital before he retired to his Florida estate. Wow, it's uh, kind of sad. Syphilis is, is scary, really, really scary. It came at it from a different angle. If you're pushing through, so I sat here last year and go, you know what, all of our efforts, 
all going on across this country. You know, two years it had been going on, almost a year and a half. And we were going to get to the end zone too slow. And because they got all these lawfare and lawsuits and all these distractions and you don't have the media. So even though we're pushing, it was two steps forward, one and a half steps back. I go, we've got to do something different. So what I did from that point all the way up to the plan where you can all learn about it, we developed a device. Remember, their biggest. Oh, he's talking about the WMD again. Here we go. Fly was the, the block is was these machines are not online. How can you have cyber? They're not online. Those machines are not online. The voting machines. Cyber evidence and how can people hack in? They're not even on the internet. We were all told that across our country in both elections. They're not on the internet. They're not on the internet. They're not. On They're not on the internet. So you take this lie and now you have these devices that are going to show when they come on the internet and what their IP address and everything, and we're giving them to officials across yes. the country. Okay. Um, I talked about this before, but these devices, the voting machines, they're not online. And the only thing that these wireless monitoring devices will do is detect routers and stuff, detect wireless networks. It will not detect devices that are not transmitting a signal to connect to, basically. There is no way to detect if these devices are transmitting signals or whatever. If they have like a Wi-Fi card or a wireless network card, they have no way to know that unless they hack in to the router that they're connected to. But they're not connected to a router. And also, schools have routers. That's where a lot of elections take place. Schools, churches, community centers, so on and so forth. Those places have um, like Wi-Fi networks of their own. So I don't know what Mike Lindell thinks he's going to accomplish with this. It's going to accomplish absolutely nothing, honestly. But okay, go on. He spent a bunch of money on absolutely nothing. And this plan's going to be awesome. I can't wait. But it's going to accelerate everything from the ground up. And remember, everybody, we still have Supreme Court cases with that one down in Arizona, if they deny it at the Supreme Court there, it's going to the big nine. It, well, it, yeah. Oh. So so when are these cases coming up at the Supreme Court in Arizona? When are these cases set to? That one is still going on. And I, to, the short answer is I don't know where it's at. To either. I don't even know what he's talking about. The Supreme Court case? I haven't heard anything about a Supreme Court case. So when are these cases coming up at the Supreme Court? In Arizona, when are these cases set to? That one is still going on, and I. So, uh, to my knowledge, there are no cases waiting to go to the Supreme Court in Arizona or federally or anywhere else. I have no clue what he's going on about right now. The short answer is I don't know where it's at. To the thing is, these judges can delay stuff too. They can sit there. Well, you're right. They can sit on it. He's right about this. They sit on it. They sit on it. He's not right about anything else, but this he's right about. This stuff. You know, I did a summary judgment, everybody. Um, I was doing a summary judgment in these Smartmatic Dominion uh, garbage cases that that just take up millions of dollars. And my lawyers told me as I was waiting for a summary judgment, you show them all this. It's kind of like my cousin Vinny. Hey, we found the weapon. These other guys, we know who did it. All this stuff. Case dismissed, right? That's what a summary judgment is. Yeah. You show all this stuff. Well, my lawyer said, oh, no, Mike. The judges can sit on the summary judgment and just let it sit there and push everything. Keep going and spending money all the way to trial. Yeah. Disgusting. Well, I mean, if they're not doing any work, then I suppose you have to pay lawyers on retainer from time to time. Um, that would be disgusting, absolutely, if it were a criminal trial. But you have a right to a speedy trial if you are dealing with a criminal case. Um, as far as civil trials go, I don't think this is even accurate completely. I don't know what he's talking about. Civil trials take a long time. Yeah, absolutely disgusting. Well, there, you know, judges are supposed to be, in a way, representatives, right? The Lord is the righteous judge. So they're supposed to be representatives of justice and righteousness. Uh, no. Judges are not supposed to be representatives of justice and righteousness. They're not supposed to be representatives of everything. They're supposed to adjudicate issues. They're supposed to come to conclusions about things. 
So I don't I don't know what the hell she's talking about here. Certainly not righteousness. When she uses that word, it makes me feel like she's talking about like judges being religious. Judges should be religious or whatever. I don't I don't know if that's what she's saying or not, but just in case, I want to make sure that I put it on record. Judges should not be involved in religion or basing their decisions off of religious ideology on the earth and right. i think for the lord allowing the legal system to be gutted and people to see what's really going on you're probably going to see um the biggest turning over of judges we have ever seen ever, going into ever. the next couple of years yep absolutely and i've said this before you know i believe back in the day and i still believe it no judge wants to be the first judge to make a ruling on the merits on merit everybody what is he talking about here's what judges do no judge in the united states has looked at any evidence cyber evidence based on merit no they've been able to look inside the machine or even take a look they won't do it okay <laughs> can't believe i even have to say this but a while back mike lindell set up a contest and the contest basically said if you can prove that you know this cyber evidence isn't real then i will give you like a five million dollars or something like that right and as it happens there was a guy a republican that proved it he proved that mike lindell was full of it now lindell is trying to flip the burden of proof and put it on others lindell makes the claim that the election was stolen and puts it on others to prove him wrong that's not how the burden of proof works but somebody did it anyways they proved that Lindell used like garbled nonsense as packets of data. It was basically like what you'd find in a honeypot. It was just fabricated nonsense. And Lindell uh, in the contract said that you have to go to arbitration. You're not allowed to sue for this money you have to go in front of a panel of judges to get it if you win the election or believe you did and so somebody did and the panel looked at the evidence and decided yes in fact the guy did win he did prove it wrong he did prove lindell wrong on this here just check this out this was back in late april 2023 reality well that is the reality it is fake it's the, it's the biggest scandal um, here I am on a family trip with my grandkids, and I'm attacked from all over the country. I, news reporters call me all day. Isn't it kind of strange this comes out the day after Fox settles with Dominion? This guy's not a cyber guy. I don't even know how he got in there with his credentials he has. He's he is a cyber guy. An IT guy, a computer guy, but he's not a cyber guy. What the hell is the difference between an IT guy and a computer guy and a cyber guy? What's he talking about? This is nonsense. Now you say, well, why did these guys rule against this? Well, three of the three arbitrators are left Democrats. Uh, we only had a, you only get a little pool to choose from. So anyway, yeah, just completely made up. Like Lindell lost fair and square. And of course he's the victim in every situation. Who, what was the name of the guy that won the, uh, hang on. It wasn't even 2020 election data. It was just random packets of code and IP addresses. And the, the type that you would expect to find in a honeypot. Like if you're trying to hack into something, a honeypot is something that uh, basically sends fake information to your system. If you think that you've like gotten in. And that's what it looks like. Like he received honeypot data. And strings of random numbers. So now Mr. Lindell has to pay $5 million. He has to put his money where his mouth is, as he put it. Turns out. So anyways, yeah, the guy lost. Okay. Mike Lindell lost and it's his fault and he's a poor fool. So sorry. I have very little to no sympathy for you, Mike. That's what he's talking about right now. Based on merit. No, they haven't been able to look inside the machine or even take a look. They won't do it. They do two things. They sanction you, which I've been sanctioned many times. They sanction you. How dare you even ask for this? Mm -hmm. How dare you bring this before my court? I'm going to sanction you. Or the another word we learned. Yeah, because it's stupid. It's a waste of everyone's time. You don't have standing. You don't have standing. Sanctions and standing. You know what? 
who does then? If we, the people can't bring a court, then they try and disbar lawyers, attack the lawyers that take the cases. Here's what I because it's insane. It's an insane thing to do. Try to sue people for all of this ridiculous nonsense. By the way, he's talking about standing. Uh, probably you probably know about standing already, but let me just clarify. In the 1980s or 90s, 2000s, I don't remember when it was exactly. There was a woman who bought a coffee from McDonald's, okay? And this coffee was way, way hotter than it was supposed to be. Keeping coffee hot keeps it tasting fresh, even if it's like three or four hours old. If the coffee goes below a certain temperature, say it goes to 150 degrees, and it sits for an hour, then it'll taste disgusting. If you bring it up to 175 degrees, it'll taste good for an hour and a half instead of one hour, you know, that kind of thing. So McDonald's, famously in the 90s, I think, legally way hotter than it was supposed to be so that they could save a little bit of money on coffee. And this woman, it got spilled on her and she literally needed skin grafts because it was so hot. It melted her skin off because they didn't want to spend extra money on coffee. Seriously. That, that, whole, that whole thing about like the woman suing because she didn't know the coffee was hot, that is one of the most successful propaganda campaigns ever run by a corporation, in my opinion, to convince the world that this woman was just a money-grubbing liar. No, no. Her skin literally melted off. It was hotter than it was legally supposed to be. So anyways, um, she had standing because she was injured directly. But nobody else can sue because they were not directly injured. That's the concept of standing. If standing didn't exist, you'd have just absolute anarchy. You'd have like a billion people suing McDonald's, even though they weren't like injured by this at all or had nothing to do with it. Maybe haven't eaten in McDonald's in 30 years and they're getting money out of McDonald's. Despite, you know, in addition to her, despite the fact that this has already been adjudicated on her behalf and everything, you know, that's the idea behind standing. Here's what I believe for the judges. I believe that once one, I believe most of them are good judges. I think that they, they, they've been very pinpointed of who to bring these cases to for the corruption, right? And I don't care. They always say, and this is a Trump appointed judge. Well, how about take the judge of Nichols where all the Dominion cases are in D.C., Sidney Powell, Rudy Giuliani, Mike Liddell, they're all before this Judge Nichols. Did you ever want to hear about Judge Nichols? He was involved. I have no idea what he's talking about, Judge Nichols. Before this Judge Nichols. Did you ever want to hear about Judge Nichols? He was involved back with Hammer Scorecard was developed by Dennis Montgomery. He was involved then. He knows all about it. I don't know what he's talking about here. I am so lost. Oh, and it's almost certainly a lie, too. Don't put hot coffee in your lap. That's not what happened. I'm telling you, KJ Dog Love. It's the most successful propaganda campaign ever run by a company. Just look into the case. Uh, McDonald's coffee hot. Okay, the coffee was between 180 and 190 degrees. That's what it was. 180 to 190. Um, it's Liebeck v. McDonald's restaurants. It was 20 to 30 degrees hotter than the coffee served at most other restaurants. This temperature range was indicated. Wait, this temperature range was indicated in its operations manual in the 10 years before the case. More than 700 people who were scalded by coffee burns made claims against the company. But McDonald's never lowered the temperature of its coffee. Yeah, that's what happened. It, it was really bad. It was really, really bad. Needlessly. Developed by Dennis Montgomery. He was involved then. He knows all about it. Is I have no clue what he's going on about. It's like he expects all of his listeners to already understand the backstory here and everything. It's insane. I would burn my skin and Starbucks does keep brewed coffee in a container. It's not made fresh. Oh, I thought that they uh, had um, the beans. I thought they had like the beans, the, the grinder that pushes coffee through on the spot. Well, anyways, 
I'm telling you, man, just look into it. It's uh, It was totally justified, that lawsuit. I read this whole thing about it. Actually, uh, here, you want a link? Let me uh, send a link that you can... Um, I mean, this isn't actually where I read about it at first. I just happened to see that this is one of the places, one of the people that talked about it. Let's see. And of course, if we're discussing lawsuits that have been labeled as frivolous, but actually might have a kernel of truth to them, there is no better place to start than the er frivolous lawsuit that is, of course, the McDonald's coffee cup lawsuit. So let's start this discussion with the story of Stella Liebeck, the woman who spilled scalding hot McDonald's coffee on her lap and sued the restaurant. Now, here are the facts, as you might not have ever heard them before. On February 27th, 1992, Stella Liebeck, then a 79-year-old woman from Albuquerque, New Mexico, ordered a cup of McDonald's coffee at the drive through window. Liebeck was sitting in the passenger seat of her parked car as her grandson stepped inside to grab some cream and sugar. Since the car had no cup holders, Liebeck placed the coffee cup between her knees and pulled to open the lid. She then spilled the entire cup of scalding hot coffee on her lap, causing third degree burns on her thighs, buttocks, and groin. All I remember is trying to get out of the car. I screamed, not realizing I was burned that bad. I knew I was in terrible pain. She was actually hospitalized for eight days and underwent skin grafting. Le skin grafts, hospitalized for eight days. Holy shit, that's crazy. It was permanently disfigured after. Like, I don't, I don't know what the industry standard is exactly. I understand it's 30 degrees cooler than that, but e either way, I don't care. That is too f***ing hot for coffee, man. I'm telling you, that's crazy. The incident and was partially disabled for two years. Some of the partially disabled for two years because of this. The trial exhibits that were used in this particular case shine a light on just how devastating her injuries were. Now, of course, Liebeck sued McDonald's, accusing the company of gross negligence and for selling coffee that was, quote, unreasonably dangerous and defectively manufactured. At trial, it was uncovered that McDonald's had been serving coffee between 180 and 190 degrees Fahrenheit, much higher than the industry norm, and which expert testimony revealed could cause third degree burns in as little as two seconds seconds other internal documents obtained third degree burns are um you know melting your skin in as little as two seconds that is king crazy that is insanely hot way too hot from McDonald's showed that between 1982 and 1992, the company had received more than 700 reports of people being burned by their coffee, with McDonald's having settled claims from said injuries for more than $500,000. In this case, the jury awarded Liebeck $200,000 in compensatory damages, but reduced that by 20% to $160,000 to account for her own negligence in spilling on herself. The jury also awarded her $2.7 million based on her attorney's suggestion to penalize McDonald's for two days worth of coffee revenue or about $1.35 million per day. The punitive damage awards was supported by the discovery that 700 people had been previously burned by hot coffee, demonstrating that the company had actual knowledge that the coffee was being served too hot but failed to remedy the issue. The judge reduced the punitive damages to three times compensatory damages, or $480,000, for a total judgment of $640,000. This decision was appealed, but the parties settled for an undisclosed amount of probably less than $600,000. Now, if prior to watching this video, you thought that this was a case about a clumsy, greedy woman trying to get rich quick over her own mistake, you're probably not alone. Thanks to a perfect storm of shortened news reports and outraged political conservatives who use the case to advocate for sharp limits on tort lawsuits, so-called tort reform, the general public was really misinformed about the nature of this case. She spilled hot coffee on her lap while sitting in her car and claimed it was too hot. Every day we hear about another outrageous lawsuit. So people basically lied to get her to be viewed as like the responsible party here as a result the general public wrongly believed Liebeck spilled coffee while she was driving her car. She was in fact just a passenger in a parked car and that the injuries were minor. She was in fact permanently disfigured. Late night comedians and sitcoms have also heavily parodied the case contributing to the false image of this particular lawsuit. You get me one coffee drinker on that jury, you gonna walk out of there a rich man. <laughs> And despite what you might have heard, Liebeck did not sue McDonald's for millions of dollars. In fact, she didn't want to sue them at all. She originally requested only $20,000 to cover her medical bills and lost income. McDonald's responded with an insulting $800 settlement offer. Liebeck's counsel had also offered settlement amounts ranging from $90,000 to $300,000, but McDonald's also rejected all pretrial efforts to settle the case. I was not in it for the money. I was in it because I wanted to bring the temperature down so that pe other people will not go through the same thing I did. 
The most that Liebeck asked for at trial was $800,000, and it was the jury that awarded her $2.7 million, which she never actually received because the punitive damages were chopped. And her critics claimed that Liebeck shouldn't recover anything because she spilled coffee on herself, but the jury did in fact find Liebeck partially responsible for her injury, applying the principles of comparative negligence, in which liability is apportioned based on how much at fault each party was for the injury. So anyways, you get the idea. That's the general sentiment. Um... She was completely innocent in this situation and had to get skin grafts and shit. Anyways, yeah. Just take a look. It's pretty bad. To be fair, if you spill even 150 degree liquid, you'll be badly burned. Yeah, probably. Not skin graft level. But yeah, I mean, just spilling liquid isn't good. But anyways. Isn't that weird, everybody? It's just not good. Like, the whole situation wasn't good. And McDonald's has a responsibility, in my opinion to ensure the safety of the customers and just decrease the temperature. Like, why would they have it so high? That's insane. There's no need for it. You don't have to have it that high. Montgomery, he was involved then. He knows all about it. Isn't that weird, everybody? You think that he shouldn't dismiss himself from the case? He should. It's a conflict of interest. It's he a should. conflict of Like, I don't have any clue who they're talking about, what they're talking about, whatever. Interest, absolutely. But I'm mm -hmm. just saying... So, but I will say this, I do believe, and maybe it'll end up being him. Maybe God said kept him there for a reason since he was involved. But but all I know is this, when one judge finally is the courageous one, courage is contagious, you will see across our country, they're going to fold like domino, all the corruption. Uh, and, I, and here's a good example, everybody, what one judge can do. Does everybody recall on airplanes, all the frivolous masks and all the garbage? Or, oh, you can't do it when you're eating and all this. One brave judge, this lady in Florida, made... I don't have any clue what he's even talking about right now. I am so lost. I knew it when you're eating and all this. One brave judge, this lady in Florida, made a ruling that said, no, this is unconstitutional or whatever it was. And you know what? Overnight, our lives change forever. We oh, still be wearing masks on airplanes. That's right. And she cha it changed. It changed in one day, everybody. And nobody. And she didn't even get attacked. That was a. So she, he's saying that one person decided not to wear masks on airplanes, so everybody decided not to wear them. Um. Okay. Amazing. Look what our judges did, the big nine. Right in the middle of all this, they overturned Rosie Wade. You know, that, that, Rosie Wade. Who is Rosie Wade? Is that a person? The big nine. Right in the middle of all this, they overturned Rosie Wade. You know, he said Rosie. R-O-S-I-E. Rosie Wade. You know, that, this is miracles, and you're going to see this happen. But Amen. God's revealing. There's a lot more to be revealed. Every Dude, this guy knows how to ramble with like the best of them. I, I don't think I've ever seen somebody with their rambling skills maxed out like this. This is honestly impressive. Buddy, there's a lot more to be. This onion gets open more and more every day. The Uniparty, everyone, remember everybody, the Democrats wanted these machines gone for two decades. Yeah, the Uniparty is evil. Don't get me started on the Unabomber. My Our God. Our biggest blockers have been the Republicans, so-called, right? So now we have this, you call it a new party, the party of common sense, yes. which is peep, the people's party. That's the Donald Trump bucket of common sense. And as more things get revealed, people realize the Democrats didn't steal this election or that election. They didn't steal all the stuff in the 2022 election. Here's who did. The CCP, the globalists, the deep state, and everybody, yep. remember this word, the Una party, the Una party. We've been boiled like frogs. This is this is the globalist uniparty. Some of the a lot of the Democrats and a lot of the Republicans don't even know that it exists. They're naive to it. They're 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 like oh, it exists. Know, yeah, they're oblivious to it, to mm -hmm. that going on. That's the biggest problem we had, especially the established Republicans that block us in all the states. You know what our biggest block states are, everybody? Here I'm going to tell you what they are. All the stuff we're doing to get to get to secure our elections. This ain't to overturn it. Like this is just to secure our elections. Go to paper ballots, hand count, and get rid of the machine. Here's the- That's not securing elections. Hand, hand, wait, hand counted paper ballots, get rid of the machines. That's not improving our election system. That is actually making it worse. It is less accurate to do hand counted and all of that. 
and it takes longer, more man hours, more money invested in the whole thing. It's stupid. It is stupid to do. The biggest blocking states, Arkansas, South Dakota, Texas, okay. Alabama, Mississippi, Oklahoma. Is it, you see a common thread there, everybody? Republican controlled, huge Republican controlled, where they've won by 70 percent, which really they won by 83 percent in the big election. Mm -hmm. Well, now, why would these guys? Wow. Is he saying Trump won by 83 percent in 2020? Controlled, huge Republican controlled where they've won by 70%, which really they won by 83% in the big election. Mm -hmm. Well, now why would these guys, why would a Republican, I'll give an example, everybody, in, in Arkansas, Cleburne County went to paper ballots hand counted earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. When they did that, everybody, if all these other counties were gonna follow suit in Arkansas, this uniparty guy named Kim Hammers, this guy went and got a bill passed in Arkansas. If you're a county and you go to paper ballots, we're gonna defund you. If you're a county and you go to hand pa hand counted paper ballots, we're going to defund you. Interesting. Okay. I don't know anybody who is a county though, so I only know people who are human beings, unfortunately. So I'm not sure which people they're going to that are counties. Interesting. I mean, you can't make this up. He's a Republican. Why would you even say that? I mean, you've got you know. Everybody, that's a deviation. That's a behavior deviation. Kind of like Doug Ducey when he said Arizona's election was good. The day they were counting or that they were showing 11 hours of evidence, he did it in the first hour. He says, our election's good here in Arizona. Shame on you, Doug Ducey, you uniparty scumbag. Wow, man. Doug Ducey, isn't he one of the people on Fox and Friends or something? I don't remember who Doug Ducey is. Well, that's what it is. It's kind of like the two have merged behind the scenes. You've taken yep. you've taken in away the donkeys and the elephants and you've made this strange mutated creature yep. that does not behave normally. If I can give everybody. That's exactly it right. And it's, yeah, and it's getting exposed and it's been around for a long time, everybody. Notice the Bushes and Clintons, their little bond, right? I mean, you go back in time yeah. to the early 2000s, Clint Curtis, who who worked for me for a while. Dude, who the hell is Clint Curtis? This guy is just rambling nonsensically on and on and on. Holy shit. Remember, he set the first algorithms to steal elections back in 2000. Oh, I remember this. Okay. Uh, so uh, Clint Curtis, if it is who I'm thinking it is, back in 2006, I think, testified in in front of Congress, maybe, that it's possible to program algorithms into voting machines. Well, yeah, it's possible to do anything. Like It's possible to write Final Fantasy VII Remake in JavaScript. Is it something that's easy? Is it something you should do? It, would it have any benefits? Would it be easily caught as a fraud? Of course. Like... No one is actually going to do that. This whole thing is logically nonsensical. But, you know, get a guy to say something in front of Congress 20 years ago and then parade that around as evidence that you were right. I guess that's kind of the plan here. He's a Democrat. He voted for Biden. But he came he came out publicly in 2004 and five. Why? Because the Republicans were using his algorithm to steal the elections. And he went public and everybody, it went all over the world. They were talking about it back in 2004, five and six. You know who listened? One country listened, the Netherlands. They wow. go, wow. They called up Kurt and they said, um, um, how do we, now that you have this on there that you can cheat elections, how do we, how do we protect ourselves with the machines? You know what he told the Netherlands? Throw them in the ocean. You can't. You can't. I don't know who he's talking about here. Who is he saying did said this? Netherlands. They wow. go, wow. They Wait. Everybody, it went all over the world. They were talking about it back in 2004, 5, and 6. You know who listened? One country listened, the Netherlands. They wow. go, wow. They called up Kurt and they said, um, um, how do we, now that you have this on there, that you can cheat election, how do we, how do we. He didn't say we have this on here. He said it's possible to do. And of course, yes, anything is possible. It's possible to 
steal information from a computer that's not connected to the internet even. You know how? There have been a billion examples of this type of thing happening. Here's one example. You want access to a computer in a building that is not connected to the internet? Drop a bunch of USB drives in the parking lot just scattered around everywhere. USB drives have a virus on them that will get in, replicate itself, and then steal the information. And then you just go, you know, have somebody go in and get the USB drive afterward. Or just fry the computer or whatever. When somebody finds a USB drive in a parking lot, of course they're going to plug it in. They want to know what's in that bad boy, you know? That's how it works. Just because you can doesn't mean that you should or that it, it will happen or that it's even easy. That the, the guy didn't say anything about that. We protect ourselves with the machines. You know what he told the Netherlands? Throw them in the ocean. You can't. You can never protect yourself against that computer. You know what the Netherlands did? In four and a half months, they got rid of every machine in the Netherlands and went... Absurd. And also, how many people are in the Netherlands? 17 million. We got 17 million compared to the United States, 330 million people. So 20 times more, basically. I think. Is that right? 20 times? Yeah, I think that's right. 20 times more people in the U.S. It's not as difficult to count ballots with 17 million people as it is 330 million people. That's insane. It's a paper ballots and count it. I have met with the Netherlands. I met with France, the UK, and Germany. I've seen all their can counting systems with paper ballots. We have a better one here in the U.S. developed by Linda Rand, who also a hand counting system developed by who? I've never heard of this person. There is no better system than using counting machines. Banks don't count money by hand because it's less accurate. Banks use counting machines. Could these counting machines lie? Sure, you could program one to lie, I suppose. Why would you do that? If there's a question, then it automatically reverts to a hand-counted system. There is a recount automatically. Or if a candidate requests a recount, there, there's a recount by hand. So if there's a question or a problem or, or some suspicion or something, any candidate can request a recount on these ballots in any state under nearly any circumstances. There's no point. As a matter of fact, Trump got his hand recounts. So it doesn't matter like if these ballots were fraudulent or if people lied about them or any of that. It's irrelevant because it was recounted. Also works with me with the cause of America. And we did an election, everybody, this spring in Osage County, Missouri. Democrats and Republicans working side by side. And they got done 10 minutes later than the machines with 100 percent accuracy. Wow. Everybody. Oh, my God. This reminds me. I, I mentioned this not too long ago also, but this reminds me of that story of the guy who was what was it? He was trying to build a railroad track or something. He was trying to beat a machine and. He eventually did technically beat the machine, but it killed him. He had like a heart attack or something, and the machine was ready to go for round two, and he was just laying there dead. We have a better one here in the U.S. developed by Linda Rand, who also... We already heard this. Jump forward a little bit. Osage County, Missouri. Democrats and Republicans working side by side, and they got done 10 minutes later than the machines with 100% accuracy, wow. everybody. You don't hear about that on Fox News, do you? Like, this whole thing is just fabricated nonsense. This guy's got problems, man. Anyway, tell me what you think about it. Is this guy ever going to come back to reality, or is he just going to keep producing those tinfoil hats? Something tells me he's going to keep going down the tinfoil hat road.